I know that some of you have been waiting to see this, the SW271C in comparison with the SW321C. Let's talk about the similarities and the differences between these two display and how they may fit into your workflow. This is Artist Right. Before we start, subscribe if you're new and hit on the bell icon so you'll be notified every time I upload cool new videos like this. So this is the last SW271C comparison with another SW display in the lineup. Once I'm done with this, all of the current SW would have already been compared to this model. And if you'd like to see another comparison, I definitely recommend checking my channel out. And also you can find other individual SW display review as well, so you can find some more information about them. Before we go on and talk about the specs, let's talk about the setup I have right behind me. SW271C, SW321C from BenQ, 27 inch and 32 inch, 4K hardware calibrated display. We can now see that there are a lot of commonalities between these two. There are a few things though that do differentiate them apart and one of them is the size of the display as you can see right here. But before we talk about the size, I want to quickly mention that both of these displays are linked up to a Mac Mini M1 and before I started this whole video, I did a calibration with Palette Master Element individually on both of them. And one of the things I will tell you is this. For my main setup, I use the SW321C alongside with the SW320. Both of them are 32 inch 4K hardware calibrated display from BenQ and they're really a joy to work with. Having those two 32 inch display, it's really awesome for the workflow that I do. I can have Lightroom on two screens and see everything fully in high resolution. It works really great. But one of the things that I will tell you right now that once you're working with a piece of great gear, a piece of great equipment, the equipment at some point of time, you really look at the specs, you really distill everything down, but it all just kind of disappear. And then every now and then you pick it up and you try to use it or you try to use it in a different environment and suddenly you realize that there is a reason why I choose that piece of equipment. The SW321C is one of those that when I was calibrating this before I got to do this video, to make sure that the color are consistent. I remember one thing about this display is that the matte coating on it is extremely matte. It's gorgeous. It's really great to look at. And when I angle this display up, it barely reflects anything. It just diffuses the light. It is a paper-like surface, unlike any other displays that I have used or seen before. Now, here's the thing. I use this on the side of the SW320, as I mentioned, and the SW320 the coating on that display is closer to the SW271C. And this one does reflect a little bit more, but once you really use two of them side by side, it's really hard to tell them apart, especially if you're not in a reflective environment or highly reflective environment, if you're in a lighting controlled environment. But it's one of those things that it's a really great feature. And once you get used to it, it just kind of blends in and you don't think about that anymore. I look at it every day. I don't really think about it too much, but I know in the back of my mind that I have this super matte display. And every time I bring a picture to look at it on this display, it just looks really gorgeous. But I just want to mention that. The other thing I want to mention about these two display too is that you can compare them on so many different metrics. One of them is a coating, as I just mentioned a moment ago. But the other thing that you probably want to look at these two display from is the aspect of size. I mean, you can see right now that a 27 inch compared to a 32 inch, that five inch difference, diagonal measurement may not make that much of a difference, but it makes the biggest difference in the space that you would put this display in and the space that you would deploy these display. So before you make a decision to buy either one of these display, I would highly consider the space that you have and the space that you want to put these display in. I would love to tell you to go to Best Buy to a computer store and see these two display side by side or a similar 32 inch display side by side with a 27 inch one. But here's the thing. When you walk into these computer stores, you're going to get this large expansive space. At that point in time, the spatial relation that you have with the display to the room that you're going to put in pretty much just dissipate. You're going to be able to see these two display size in relation to each other, but you won't be able to imagine or picture this 32 inch display in relation to your space. And it's one of those things that's really hard to just gauge how big this display is and how awesome it is, by the way, I love huge displays. 
but it's hard to really gauge how big this display is when you deploy it into your workspace. And this also applies to going to photo trade shows as well. So you can go see it there, but you have so many displays out there and you're in such a large space that it really doesn't matter much. But I would look at it, these two displays, if you're looking to get one of these two from a space perspective and see which one fits best into your space and the studio space that you have. All right, now let's jump into the specs. Both of these are 4K UHD, that is 3840 by 2160 for those of you who are keeping track. And because they are difference in size diagonally, 27 versus 32 inch, this is going to change the pixels per inch pitch on the display. On this one, you're going to have a pixel per inch of around 163, where on the bigger SW321C, you're gonna have a 137 pixels per inch. Some of you may ask if you're going to see the difference between that extra 26 pixels per inch on the smaller 27 inch model. And the answer to that is no. When you're really using these displays, you're gonna be set a little bit further back from them anywhere. You're not really gonna be just right in front of the display where you can really see the pixels. And because of that reason alone, these 26 pixels per inch doesn't make too much of a difference. But here's the thing though, to really get true retina display resolution, you want to get something above 200 pixels per inch. So if you're looking for something that may scale a little bit smoother when you're trying to run your apps and bring the resolution a little bit closer to retina light, I maybe go with the 27 inch model just because of the higher or the slightly higher pixels per inch compared to the 32 inch model. But I mean, just from weeks of using these two displays side by side, you're not really gonna see that big of a difference. These two being that they're all different panels on the inside, obviously, there are differences in the peak brightness. 300 nits for the SW271C and 250 nits for the SW321C. Now, if you're a photographer, you're gonna be calibrating your display to anywhere between 80 to 120 nits anyway. So the peak brightness for these display won't matter much. If you're grading your video or you're doing color grading and video editing for Rec. 709 standard color content, you're gonna be perfectly fine with these range of brightness because in general for a video edit, I also recommend that you use 80 to 120 nits or candela for the brightness there and it's going to work really well. However, if you want to do HDR grading, these panels are compatible with HDR10 and also HLG hybrid log gamma, but to really do two HDR editing on these display, well, number one, it's going to scale everything down. So that's the first thing. But secondly, what you will also need is an external box to route the display signal from your computer to this box and then back to display so that you can view and edit in full HDR or in the scale HDR for that matter. So to really do the color grading there, you're gonna need that extra box anyway. And when you use that box, it's going to rescale all of what you're gonna see on the display. So you, it's going to work in that regards as well. Now with that out of the way, let's talk about the contrast. Both of these display have a 1000 to one contrast ratio. They are both IPS LED backlight, amazing angle of view. And yes, with an IPS panel, when you turn it to the side, sometimes what you get is a slight darkening, but the colors are still really great. So if you have people gathering around, if you're in a production environment, this is gonna work really great. Or even if you have the display turn to you, for instance, if you're running two displays and you have both of them in a V, you're still going to see really great colors for, at an angle. And that's gonna be really great for what you may need to do. Both of these display are 10-bit Dunvine 8-bit plus FRC. What that means is that majority of a signal is carried over the 8-bit and the extra 2-bit is done via frame rate control which means some of the pixels are changing the colors at different frequency, making you see the extra two bits so that you're seeing the equivalent of a 10 bit display. Now, here's the thing. For majority of photographers out there, I will tell you right now that 95% of photographers out there, you really don't need to go out and get a true 10 bit panel because they generally cost a lot more money and the value that you're really going to get in return is really low. The only circumstance that I really find that you really need a true 10 bit is that if you're working in a high-end retouching house and you're constantly zooming in on your images at four to 600% all the time and you need to see exactly what that pixel looks like with regards to the color, then that would be the reason why you want a true 10-bit panel. Otherwise, I mean, in my daily work, I have been using 8-bit plus FRC for more than 15 years now. 
and it hasn't been a problem at all. So that's my perspective on that. And I genuinely think that this technology does offer the best value in the display market right now. So that is some of the base panel spec, but there's one more thing about these two panels that sets them apart. And I already mentioned this earlier in the introduction, and that is the panel coding. So on the SW321C, BenQ still have this unique technology that the panel that you're seeing here is almost paper-like. It's extremely matte. And the best way for me to demonstrate this is to literally flip this panel up a little bit here and turn this towards the light. You can see right now that this is a glare, but it's a glare on the display that is very similar to the way how light would reflect off a piece of paper, a matte paper, a fine art paper for that matter. But if I do the same thing on the SW271C, and by the way, this is also still a matte coating, but slightly different than the SW321C. So I'll angle this up and I'll turn this towards the light a little bit. You can see right there that this is now reflecting a little bit more of a light compared to this panel itself. And I've angled it a little bit so you can see between the two. So the glare on the SW321C is heavily reduced just because of the coating on the panel itself. And I absolutely love the panel coating on here. So if you want to get the absolute best BenQ coating panel technology right now, and also the top of the line flagship SW display, SW321C is definitely the model to look at. Now, beyond this, we need to talk about BenQ AccuColor technology. And the best way that I have described AccuColor technology is hardware, software, and calibration working together in concert to create a color accurate panel that you can use in your workflow. So some of them include the color gamut coverage. Both of these display can do 99% Adobe RGB. This is pretty much a given at this point. They also come with their own individual calibration report card from the factory. So that's another great thing there. And continue on with the color gamut coverage. You also have 100% sRGB. And I'm also going to say that you're probably going to be able to get 100% Rec. 709 as well, even though that's not listed on the official spec sheet. But the color gamut that I'm about to mention here generally all cover Rec. 709 anyway. So you're going to be good. Now, the difference between these two display is going to be the P3 color gamut coverage. On the SV321C, you're going to get about 95% P3 coverage, whereas on the SV271C, you're going to get 90% P3 coverage. Now, 90% is still a high number, and you're still going to be able to get really great P3 gamut out of these two panels. But if you're really leaning more towards a DCI P3 or display P3 calibration for your workflow, for what you may do, and you want the higher number or the 5% higher, I would go with the SW321C and that would be a consideration there. Both of these display are hardware calibration capable and has been updated to BenQ latest 16-bit 3D LUT. This means that when you'd run a calibration, the program would have much more room to do color referencing in that 16-bit color space so that you even get more color and more accuracy out of it. The best program to calibrate these display would be BenQ own developed program called Palette Master Element. And I have multiple guides and tutorials on how to use that. It is the fastest and the easiest program to use. This 3D LUT is also open to third-party access. So you can use a program from Camman or Lightspace to run a true hardware calibration on this display. Now, the next thing we need to talk about is the uniformity technology. And there is a slight difference between the version for the uniformity technology on these two panels. So for the SW321C, being that this is the model that came before the SW271C, this one features uniformity version two. And on the latest one here, this one features uniformity version three. So you may wonder if there is any difference or any visual differences between these two uniformity technology or this improvement. The short answer to that is not so much. And the reason why is because BenQ have done such an amazing job with uniformity version two that when they upgraded to three, essentially what you have now is uniformity even more closer to the edge of the panel and a more rigorous calibration process at the factory. So they have gone in and improved this even further than they have with the SW321C. But from the user perspective, and from me using all these display, running the uniformity tests on them, there's not that big of a difference. You're going to get a really great panel. Now, the other thing too that BenQ have also introduced with these two panel is color consistency technology. What is this, you may wonder. 
Well, if you get multiple of these SW321C or multiple of these SW271C and you set them side by side, uncalibrated just from the factory, the colors are gonna match really closely right out of the box. This is done through the calibration process they have done at the factory just to ensure that the colors for each of the panels that you're getting are gonna be super consistent right from the factory floor. And that is just something absolutely amazing. One of the things we need to talk about this display is specifically the bezel. And that has to do with the SW271C bezel on the display. So you may know if you watch my other comparison videos or you've been doing research on these display that the model that come before this is pretty much almost bezel-less. It has this infinity edge kind of thing. Where this one, BenQ have built the bezel back in. The reason why BenQ have decided to do this is a big engineering reason to improve your user experience and that is to reduce backlight bleeding on the panel. And they have done a really great job with this, including on the SW321C as well. Next up is design and ergonomics. Being that this is an SW display line, it's designed with all gray throughout to minimize any distraction from the environment whatsoever so that the screen itself it's not going to distract you from what you're working on, but rather just blend in so that you're just focusing on the creative content you're working on. And this has always been the design philosophy for the SW line. And they have really stick true to that. Another thing about these SW displays is that if you're familiar with any of the SW display before, it has an amazing range of motion that you can put this display in. You can lower the display, you can bring it up higher, tilt it forward, tilt it back. You can also turn the display left to right and it has this amazing range of motion that you can use the display in different postures and different environment and you're going to be able to adjust the display to what you need just fine. The panel itself will also rotate to a vertical orientation and they also come with a shading hood. For both of these models, the shading hood will cover the horizontal orientation and they come with the extension pieces. So if you want to use your display in a vertical orientation and put the shading hood on, you have all the pieces ready and you can just assemble it together. And the way how BenQ have designed these hoods for the SUV display is included and is also really a well thought out design that is really meant to be integrated right into the panel itself, but you don't really see it. So you can use the display without the shading hood. That's not a problem at all. But if you want to use it, it's there, it's ready for you and the assembly and take apart it's just super easy. Being that this is an SUV display line as well, one of the big things I really love about this line is the handle on the stand itself that makes it a breeze to move these display around to put them in different position and so forth. And I take these display on location before and having that handle there helps a lot. And also when I'm setting up for these video because I am moving these display around quite a bit. Both of these also come with BenQ Hotkey Puck Gen 2 that extends the functionality of the display, giving you easy, quick shortcut keys to change the different color mode, or you can go in and customize to choose different input. And on the Hotkey Puck Gen 2, you also have an extra function key that you can go in and customize it the way how you like it. You can choose it to change color mode or to change the input for your display. So you have a lot of room for customizability with the Hotkey Puck Gen 2. One more thing I want to mention about the SW321C because of the extreme matte coating is that it also comes with a roller to clean the display for lint and dust that may be on the display. You can always use a microfiber cloth to slightly go over the display to clean any lint out. But if you want to, you can also use this. And this is something that is totally unique in the BenQ SW lineup. So on these other ones, you can totally use a microfiber towel. You're going to be fine with that, but it's a little bit more delicate on the SW321C. The base on the SW271C have increased in both width and also depth of it. And this is done to comply with European regulation standard. Pretty much this makes this display like super sturdy and even more sturdy than the stand that's on the SW321C. And this is, you know, to me already a pretty sturdy stand, but this pretty much takes it up a notch right there. From here, we need to talk about the color modes on the display. So they come with all the color mode that we expect, Adobe RGB, sRGB, Rec. 709, Display P3, DCI-P3, and many more. This also includes BenQ Advanced Black and White mode that has been known in these SW display and also their latest M-Book color mode that is designed to match the display color to an uncalibrated Apple built-in display. This would be your MacBook, MacBook Pro, or your iMac display. So if you want it, the color just to match without doing any calibration. MBook is a good color mode to consider when you're using those displays with the NQSW.
Both of these display have gamut dual that you can view your created work in two different color gamut as a picture in picture or picture by picture, giving you a quick preview of your work. It also has three hardware calibration slots, giving you the flexibility to calibrate for multiple computers or even if you're just using one computer, you can calibrate them in different RGB primary and get true hardware calibration on all those three slots. Or you can also calibrate it for different display luminance. There are multiple different ways to creatively use the three hardware calibration slot and you can definitely check out my channel for those contents. And lastly, both of these display have BenQ latest color mode called Paper Color Sync. The whole premise behind Paper Color Sync that was introduced with the SW321C is to match the white point of the display as close as possible to the white point of the paper. Therefore, when you're previewing what you're about to print from your inkjet printer on the display, you're going to see pretty much really close to what the printer is going to print out. This is going to save you time in proofing and also resources, paper, ink, and everything else in the process. Pretty much the two printer brands that are supported at this point is Canon and Epson. And I would definitely check out the models that is being supported right now, along with a paper type from BenQ website to just see which one is currently supported at the moment. And BenQ is always currently working on expanding the printer model support and also paper or paper color sync as well. Let's quickly talk about certification. Both of these are Camera and Verify and Pantone Validated, guaranteeing that you're always going to get great colors. And moving on to connectivity, you're going to get two HDMI 2.0, one full display port 1.4, and USB Type-C with 60 watt power delivery. So on a compatible system, it's just one singular cable, pretty much that USB Type-C cable will carry the display signal, the I.O. signal, and also 60 watt power delivery to your device. If you're using a more power hungry device, for instance, 60 watt power delivery may or may not be enough. It would most of the time be able to sustain it. But if you're doing a lot of CPU or GPU intensive tasks, sometimes it will only power device but not charge a battery. And in some instances, it may also tap into the battery on the device itself. And if you're in those circumstances where you're using a lot of power, I recommend plugging in the original power brick that comes with your computer. This way you can power your computer fully and get the full speed out of it and not so much rely on the 60 watt power delivery. But for the most part, if you're just going to use your computer lightly or moderately, 60 watt is going to be perfectly fine. It also has a USB type B 3.0 port. So you can use this on a computer that does not have USB type C. And on the side display, you also have two USB A ports that you can use in with a legacy device and also an SD card reader. One more additional thing on the display as well is that it also has a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack out and you have the sound control on the display. Now, even though you have the volume control on all these SW display, there's no speaker built in. It's really designed to control the volume when you're using the DAC that's built into the display. So for instance, if you're using a headphone or you're using an external speaker, you can use the display to pretty much be the conduit between that because most of the cable that we're using to link the display to our computer is going to be able to carry those extra sound signal as well. And one last thing about these two models, because these are BenQ latest generation SUV display, they also have a service port on them, making firmware update on these two models a breeze. If you ever feel that you need to update the firmware on your display, the best thing to do is to contact BenQ support directly because these firmware are not directly distributed or there is not any public download link. This has to be provided by the support department from BenQ. So I would recommend contacting your local BenQ support for a firmware update for these models. And lastly, let's talk about the video features for these display. BenQ have added a few HDR support modes for this one. So all of BenQ SW display, especially the current one, all have HDR10 support. But with these two models, BenQ have also gone in and added HLG hybrid log gamma support. So if you want to do content mastering in HDR, you can certainly do this on these two display. It also is compatible with an SDI output device. And those both of these models have been tested extensively with a few devices that BenQ have in their lab to run the testing and work without any issues at all. And one of the most important features for any type of Creative Video Pro is this, is that these displays support multiple native frame rate or native refresh rate 
on the display itself. So for instance, if you shot your video in 24p and you want to play it back in 24p, eliminating any pull down, any type of jittering that may happen from the footage, these would definitely be the display to do that with. You can do that from the OS or if you link the source, for example, your camera directly to it, it will also be able to automatically detect the frame rate that you're photographing or that you're filming at rather and be able to adjust the display to those native frame rate. Therefore, there's not any pull down at all. Okay, so this has been the comparison between the SW271C and the SW321C. There are many similarities between these two display and some differences between them. The size being number one, the coating of the display being number two. So those are primarily going to be the main factor that you would look at when you're trying to choose between these two models. The best thing to do though is I would look at the display and look at the size in general and how that would fit into the space that you have. A 32 inch, if you're really going to push it to fit into your space, it may not work and a 27 inch may be better for that. But if you definitely want to have the best for the panel coating right now and the largest panel, the super flagship the BenQ has to offer in the SW lineup, well, SW321C is definitely the one to go with. So anyway, I hope that I'm able to guide your decision and also show you some of the differences between these models and help you choose the best SW display that best fit into your workflow. If you have any questions or comments, leave them below. Give this a like, subscribe if you're new, hit on the bell to be notified. And until next time, in art we trust.